everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Back for month off. Woohoo! Joy and excitement to see Michael. If you've ever wanted to get things done, <laughs> if you've ever wanted to. Oh, Did goodness. I just add crazy to your life? If you've ever wanted to get the things done you want to get done and get a better night's sleep, then do we have the show for you. Today we'll talk about evening routines, morning routines, and everything in between. In fact, plus we'll talk about a Durham visit, cawing like a bird, going through pain, deer sanctuaries, camouflage snowbirds, cruising on Halloween, the first trimester conspiracy, <laughs> and what in the world Michael saw at Jessica's doctor's first visit. <gasps> So welcome back to the show, CJ. <laughs> Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woo! Woo! Okay. Oh my gosh. Do you have pictures or what do they no, do now? Or videos? It's, it's it's not it's not what you think. And Jessica wanted me to make sure to mention this so that I could thoroughly embarrass myself. She said okay. women would be enamored with this, and I said guys might drive off the road. There has been no, we did not do the, the ultrasound for dating. We did not do that because okay. that's actually quite invasive. And we've been learning a bunch about ultrasounds. Oh. And, um, you know, we're the EMF, <laughs> the people who don't use cell phones that much. And she's been wearing an EMF shirt oh, that, wow. that blocks cell phone radiation. And it turns out they haven't done much testing on ultrasound. I have oh. no idea about that. So it was actually designed for the Navy for sonar, and they just brought it over to babies. And the only studies that there are from the 80s, which weren't that positive for babies. So we're going to do as little ultrasound stuff as we can. Oh, oh so that's the first hard. One, the but first I get one, it. real invasive, and it's only to determine the baby's age. We've got that pretty much dialed as far as what day uh, you know baby is going to be uh, due. This is going to be a, a solstice-ish baby. So, um, wait, so how do they, cause you know, when I, when I was younger <laughs> and I went through this, they had a range where they said the baby may be, you know, and it was like a three week range of time. Cause they couldn't really figure out exactly the day of inception. So are the tools better? Do you have like, what's the degree of accuracy of your birthday? Well, there's still some wiggle room. She used an, an app because we, this was a planned pregnancy. So she right. used an app. So she could track everything. So she knew and, the time of conception, possible days of like. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. So we had that dialed. And then they say for a first baby, you actually add at least 10 to 12 days oh. because the body has to figure out how to contract and how to do all this stuff. So it takes some additional learning. Hmm. So you don't go and tell your family the exact nine months or they're going to be hounding you going is something wrong. Right. <laughs> Adding, so, yeah, yeah, get it. So, so you add a, a buffer to it, which gives us a, approximately uh, June 20th, June 21st. Wow, uh, that'd be cool if it was the 21st. So, you know, I'm hoping for a solstice baby. There's also nice. Father's Day in there somewhere. So, yes. so that could be kind of cool too. But yes. but I'm hoping for a solstice baby and, and we're, we're planning accordingly. We, we are... You know, we've got the midwife chosen. We have the, the doctor's facility chosen. If we need to go that route, we're planning an, an at-home birth, though, uh, with a, uh, uh, I, I Doula. call it, the, uh, well, with a midwife and um, a uh, water birth. So a, a inflatable mm -hmm. pool thing in the living room, so to speak. Well, tell me about it, because I, I actually went to the doctor. I had an epidural. It you know, they were talking about movies during the time that they were operating, <laughs> slicing my stomach and taking my sons out of oh my, my stomach for the second round. So what is this water birth thing all about? So uh, water birth is, in my layman's versions of understanding, is uh, it's more natural in a pool of water. The water, baby is coming out of water and into water and mm. makes it easier transition and easier procedure and easier birthing. Mm. So for the baby or the mother or both, both, wow. both. So I mean, if you go, you know, where you, you did spend time in Hawaii, there are actual saltwater pools where Hawaiians did this with the mommies is, mm. is they were birthing pools. So it's a, 
very long standing tradition. And so we're going to, not that she's Hawaiian, but, but we're, we're going to go that way. And, and I have volunteers. Wait, not salt water, just regular water. Just regular water. And then how, how deep is the water? And is it like a kid's pool or what kind of pool is it? It's not a kid's pool. It's some sort of uh, inflatable pool. I've seen the pictures of these things. Like a hot tub uh, size or? Yeah, we'll call it hot tub height. Or, oh, okay. You know, if you slid into a hot tub, but but bigger. So there's more room for her to take up space if she needs to. Right. And, and for uh, someone else and probably a midwife to be in there. I have actually, crazily enough, volunteered to be in the pool during this procedure <laughs> so all three of you will be in the pool so this has to be i pretty... don't know either that i don't know how it'll all work out well we'll get you more pool details i'm just curious okay so it's like four feet tall the wall of the pool and then i mean this is a lot is it warm water or what's yeah yeah it's, no, it's, so it's, there... it's heated heated pool warm water um don't know about the filtration system <laughs> <laughs> okay so then also if like some type of emergency occurs then you also have like an alternative plan when you go to the doctor and whatever Bingo. happens so we go down through the road to the hospital so that was actually the first so we've met with the midwife several times yeah and you meet with her once a month now and any questions and go over things and and all of the all of the basics there and we also went to the doctor's office one time that was this this week that that was the the interesting visit, and um, we will have that lined up so that if we have to go to the hospital, there's a doctor on call waiting for us. Okay, got it. And I can't remember you meet every month, right? For yeah, both meet every month till seven months. Then it's twice a month, and then starting at the eighth month, it's weekly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so exciting. Okay, so what happened during your recent doctorate? So now I'm sorry, we can retrace again. I, I, I don't know if I can even share this. This is, this is Jessica has a sense of humor. For everybody who's not sure, Jessica has a real sense of humor to be bringing this up, and she's going to dying laughing that I shared this. <sighs> Let's just say they showed me more than I felt I needed to see. Okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. For those, and this is PG friendly, so kids won't get what this is, but they showed me her cervix. Oh, okay. So, and Jessica says, I've seen more about her than she's seen of herself now. <laughs> and the doctor's going, here's where the baby's going to come from. Here's where the dilation's going to take place. <laughs> You're like, no, stop the madness. T-M-I. <laughs> I am so loving and supportive. And, Je and, and Jessica was like, yeah, yeah, go take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, she's like, you know, I wish you had been quick about it, though, because this isn't the most comfortable procedure. So, wow. <sighs> so you so, saw her cervix, and then do you see, can, like, could you see the baby? Like, what else did you see in there? It's the closed. Year. It's closed for nine months. <laughs> okay. Completely closed. Why did you even have to look in there? What was there to see then? I found some humor and showing me. <laughs> and they're like, this is where the baby's going to come from. This is where you're going to see if it's dilated. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I tell well, you after, if ever there was natural birth control, this was it. <laughs> well... I hate to tell you, but it could it can get worse. Like my husband, when they get the C section, they, they like oh. take like different parts of your body out so that they can get the baby out. So you like he's just like, oh my god, <laughs> there's pictures of everything. <laughs> he took pictures, you know, because you're so excited and you're waiting for the baby to come out. It's a C section, and so there's like it's like blood and guts. Like it's like um, what's that um, that movie, Little Shop, Shop of Horrors? <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> exorcism but okay yeah there's like it's like all these like parts of my really? body That's the movie. yeah and then and then and so he took a, he had i don't know he was so excited right i mean i get it he took a picture of this like gory <laughs> that they pulled out and so it, it could get worse than the cervix you could I'm, see I'm... person's organs <laughs> like, i don't know what they're pulling out but it was red bloody and disgusting we so have a, 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 a dear friend former coaching client who has said i need to wear a gopro during this procedure and jessica's like oh hell you're not <laughs> <laughs> 
he's like, you will want to look at this over and over again. <laughs> no, thanks. I, I mean, I barely I'm like discussing floating poop on the, in the pool. Well, I, here's what I would tell you is that having, um, that's, that's very interesting. <laughs> I want to know more about the filtration again. Well, so, no, they said it's a fish net or something, a fish <laughs> scoop. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm volunteering for what? I'm it's, there with her, CJ. I'm there with her each step of the way. I got to tell you, it's as a woman, it's the most in like you feel like you really feel like your animal roots because first of all, you're just an object like a machine ready to do something. Like when I was in the hospital, I'd be sitting on the toilet and some nurse be like, hey, I'm like, doors closed. Like usually someone would wait until or knock on the door, but just fling the door open, talking to me. I'm like, there is just no civility in this scenario. So seriously. We're going for the home birth. Yeah, poop, poop, <laughs> floating in the water. Okay, it's just part of the whole experience. Oh my God. So, but, but she's doing, you know, we went out last weekend. She's, she's training for this. Yeah. So we went out last weekend and we went on, on a pretty substantial hike, a couple thousand foot gain. And, and she's taking a little bit slowly. So um, her body's doing great. No morning sickness. Oh, she that's huge. Sickness, but no morning sickness. That's huge. Um, but she, she is more tired. So we took it slow on the way up and we got up on top of this, this uh, just amazing climb up to the, on the side of, of these waterfalls and one waterfall to the next. And so we're being sucked into this thing going, you do realize that the restaurants in town close by 3.30 right. on Saturday. So if you want lunch, you're gonna have just one more. I feel like I'm, I'm, like, I'm, feel like I'm being rope-a-doped here. Yeah. One more, one more, one more. And then I'm like, I'm looking at the watch, I'm going, I don't know about this. And then she turned on Pookie Power. <laughs> and that downhill, she hit my watch the fastest. It wasn't for a full four minutes. The fastest right. we hit was like a 420 mile on this downhill. Yeah. And she is just, you know, several months pregnant, booking it to get her food. She, she, was she running? <laughs> oh, my God, was she running, CJ. I could barely keep up. Oh, my God. Is this the first trimester conspiracy or is this the... Cr first cr trimester conspiracy is either... So in this country, people don't talk about trimester because of their, the risk of... of um, and, and uh, the the risk of a um, miscarriage, oh, and and I know to each their own. But I feel like if people talked more, then women would be able to throttle back more in the first trimester instead of having to hide it. Mm -hmm. Because what they don't talk about is you're completely exhausted. Right. During the and, first. And you have to hide it because you don't really want anyone to know because it may not be a real thing and all that. Bingo. And I I have to think the not wanting people to know and then living as you're living can actually exaggerate your chances of a miscarriage because your body wants rest big time. Yeah. I just remember throwing, I had the worst morning sickness. So I would be like, hold on. You know, I'd be at a meeting like Bleh! in the bathroom. I'm like, okay, so what are we talking about in this meeting? <laughs> and you can't say anything to anyone, you know? So it's only when you're drinking wine, they're like, you're not having wine and you're like, nope that you're kind of found out but still yeah so that's your first that's your first trimester conspiracy so you're you're going against the prevalent wisdom going against we're nine we're nine this is recording nine weeks in it will air at 10 weeks in and we're going to share as much as we can i actually started a blog where i write letters um i'm writing a letter daily to um to our baby hannah uh, we assume it's a girl we've already picked out her name although we still have a middle name thing to figure out with numerology, that's turning out to be tricky. We'll get there. But um, but Jessica runs all the back end of the show. And so I've got the blog post up, but she doesn't have the energy to actually make a lot of it public. <laughs> there has been so much letting go in this whole thing. Exactly. It is such It will a get there when it needs surrender. to. Exactly. Totally agreed. So it's surrendering and surrendering more. We will try to get up a list on our website, my guess is in the next week of what we could use assistance with for the show, because Jessica has to pull back from so much. She'll still be the producer, but we'll need upload assistance and web page assistance and all these things for, for volunteers who are enjoying the show and want to help out because right now it's, it's homeboy. Yeah. <laughs> and, I get it. uh, Which is too much. YouTube. Yeah. 
but uh, it is. It is. So, and I've watched this week several balls, minor balls dropped, several things were, you know, out of order. And it's just allowing into even that. Yeah. I'm like, hey, we've got baby coming. I understand. It's only going to get more interesting from here. We'll figure it all out. And she's like, look, it's really good that I'm tired in the, trim- the first trimester. That gives you more time to figure out how to get the assistants on board. <laughs> it's trial one. It, it, that's actually a really good point. That is a good point. I mean, you're getting things done, but you're getting different things done. You know, I mean, it's a different way of thinking about getting things done and accomplishment. Because once you have kids, I think it's helpful to kind of change your orientation towards accomplishment to something broader, you know. Because otherwise, you know, I I feel like the first five years – were me torturing myself and suffering, mostly because I had an unrealistically high um, set of expectations I was placing myself, which were the same expectations I had on myself pre-baby. And those pre-baby and post-baby expectations, something has to give. And what was giving was my own personal health and well-being and mental well-being, because I kept on trying to push to achieve the same level that I did before. And I just couldn't right and then that was the thing that caused so much stress so I think it's really good that you're letting go now because it's just this it's a I mean it is what it is it's accepting that I I think what's nice is that you're accepting and conscious of the change I think what I would say happened to me because I was younger not as enlightened as you are I I was just unconscious so I was just running all these old programs and trying to continue running those old programs, even though something had substantially changed. You know, I had a new life, two new lives then, and my life and expectations didn't change. And I think that that caused so much harm to myself, to probably my kids, to my marriage. And so I think what you're doing is just brilliant. Honestly, I applaud you. Thank you. I know it's to me, She's like, well, I'm kind of tired. I don't know if I'm I'm like, sleep, go sleep. Because her wiring is work, used to be work equals worth. We've worked on this for many years. She's done a lot of work on this, but she came from kind of a family where, and and I'm guessing you did too, where (laughs) that was essential to your beingness was what are you getting done? How much are you producing? How productive are you being? How hard are you working? And, and I have to had to say to her, you no, know, she, she wasn't working too hard, but she didn't want to feel guilty about it. I said, your work is building a baby. You're building another life. Go sleep. You are literally building a human being right now. There is no more doing that needs to get done. Yeah, it's very hard to change that wiring. I mean, you guys have such a huge head start and even understanding that there is wiring, right? That there is, you know, you have a cultural wiring of which both Jessica and I are Chinese and your accomplishment equals your value equals you equals your worth equals whether you're enough or not. There's this, am I enough? Is am I a value? And if you don't accomplish anything or of, you know, baby does not somehow in the Chinese equation equal work. So it's like, if you don't accomplish anything, there's just a sense of guilt and shame. And none of that has to be the case if you're consciously aware that that whole story is ridiculous, right? You are complete, you're enough, nothing separate, you know. But, you know, most people, when they have kids, they don't, they don't know that there's this unconscious programming that is making you feel bad. So for her to know that and to work on it, any work is huge, really huge. I'm still working on it. I just had a meditation retreat in um, San Francisco, and I've been at this since um, a year from last July, so almost a year and a half. And, you know, I asked my teacher, what can I work on? And he said, stop defining yourself based on your accomplishment. And I thought, gosh, darn it. (laughs) <laughs> I thought I've worked on that last year and the year before and that, you know, and it's just this constant letting go. And the sooner you can let go of that, the more joy and freedom and less suffering you can have. So 
it's been the number one thing I've been getting in automatic writing, mm -hmm. which has been, you're completely loved and supported. We're going to absolutely take care of you. Don't worry about when your programs come out. Don't worry when this takes place. Don't worry about this, that, or the everything. Relax into all of it. Ease up on the reins and relax into it all. It's going to all work itself out. Don't even try to drive the ship right now. All right. It's that's very good advice from your inner wisdom, your inner inner self, wisest yeah. self, honestly. So that's your wisdom on you'd started off by saying getting things done. And that's kind of your it's kind of a shift in mindset is what I'm hearing you say. There's been a big shift in mindset. We still want to work within what we've got. Right. So like we are releasing uh, our evening routine, I believe it'll be next week. It's supposed to be October. Yeah. Okay. We didn't know she'd be pregnant. Right. So, so it'll be um, in November. We're very excited about that. I have done more work to hone my routine to be able to be more efficient with what is as her routine kind of falls away, which is interesting, like trying to get to the gym in the mornings. She gets up when she gets up. Yeah. She eats when she's ready to eat. If she needs to sit for a little bit after she ate because she has, I don't like the term raging, but I don't know what else to use. Coursing, coursing hormones right now of changes in the body. It has to wait before going to the gym. You have to roll with that. And so I've worked to be more efficient on my routines to kind of give myself more time to buffer everything. Yeah, every being which able way to I pivot. Can. Like, okay, like that's not that. Okay, then I'll do it then. Then I'll do it. Cause that's, you have exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah, it's the ultimate, it's the ultimate in multitasking. It's like, oh, I was going to get that done, but now there's orange juice all over the floor and jello on the, on the, <laughs> on the wall. It's, it's so funny because this week, <laughs> Three, four, five bags of food stuff have spilled, all with me there. And Jessica's <laughs> seen it. The bag's like this. And all of a sudden, on its own, it goes and just spills out like quinoa. The whole kitchen floor filled with quinoa. Have you ever tried to vacuum up quinoa? The vacuum actually spits it out behind the machine. <laughs> spread it out more evenly. And then it sticks to your feet. And you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Well, get used. This is just preparing you for what to come. Because I didn't hit the bag. I'm like, all right, angels. I get it. You've got a sense of humor. <laughs> and bag after bag has gone down. Wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and and not hilarious. I know it's frustrating. Uh, well, get used. This is good practice. This is good practice because once that baby comes, they'll be throwing all sorts of stuff and things will be tipping all over because you're tired and so it's just getting you used to what your new world will look like and just like okay well i was going to do that but now i'm i guess i'm cleaning up quinoa and yep. figuring out why it's coming out the other end of the bag that yes, is exactly <laughs> CJ, where okay. are you going today? <laughs> you went On that there. Note, I've been reading baby books, but different baby books. I've been reading books. This was not at all where I planned to go in today's show, but I've been reading baby books about how sentient they are, how early. Yeah, that so, makes sense to me. So the, the, the latest research shows that, that they have full sensory perception around eight or nine weeks. Mm -hmm. you, you can tickle them with a feather and they'd move and they'd react to it and they'd try to touch it and see what's going on. And it's not like the brain doesn't, the whole I, I, idea in the past was babies don't feel, the brain doesn't come online right away. They don't see right away. They don't this right away. It's all not true. Mm -hmm. That baby is a fully sentient being in there doing its own exercise routine, literally moving itself, strengthening itself, working on strengthening the lungs. And, and it knows what's going on. That's and cool. so, that's changing my understanding. Like first we were like talking about, you know, reading baby, baby books. And I'm like, wait, let's play with this. Maybe we'll read it. Paul Selig. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably get this stuff. Well, you know what I, um, uh, my meditation teacher, my guru says that, um, when at conception, there's literally a streak of light because it's an individuated light point of light and consciousness. So it's like, you literally look and it's a streak of light, which I thought, wow, how interesting. I mean, we are energy and at that point of conception before anything else is created, it's just like a little streak of light, which I think is kind of a beautiful thing. 
Very, so, very which cool. is consciousness, right? I mean, it is that streak of light is consciousness. And so an energy and, you know, something that hasn't really manifested is manifesting as pure light. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. So of course it's sentient. That makes complete sense to me. It's probably more sentient than we are. I mean, it's just right yes. from some some other oneness place and is out. I mean, it, that baby has more sentient sentience than we do in a lot of ways, you know, I think, to some higher level energy than we do. And um, so the trick is, how much can you? And I was talking with Paul about this on the show a couple of days ago in his guides. How much can you help keep a clear channel? Because Paul Selig and I, we, we were talking about and with his guides about how um, our true self has no fear. Not meaning we're unafraid, not having anything to do with courage, but we're not in this fear-based world. And if you think about it, almost every thought has something to do with fear. And, and I asked him, I said, okay, Paul, so, and guides, I'm like, if we still have fear inside of us, if we were still in this fear-based world, how do we raise a child without it? And, and it was, this is not even close to paraphrasing, Paul, but in my own words, good luck. Because if we're operating in that wiring, we're still gifting that wiring to our children. He said, on a positive note, though, they came in, they're coming in further along on this chain. They're prepared for the changes to come, and they come in understanding that. So they're more prepared for it mm. because there is no way to fully separate. But I do wonder, and that's what we're doing the best we can. We still have, we still have our buttons, our emotions, our human, everything. We can't all of a sudden go, oh, baby's coming. Oh, right. I'm perfect now. Well, you know, my husband has, a, a, I told you, as a new teacher and one of the uh, first class it's actually in Colorado this teacher is fantastic teacher but one of the things that he first studies studied was attachment parenting and and looking at Buddhism and looking at the intersection between these two things and I may be botching it but something along those lines and I've been thinking a lot about that as my niece has gotten you know, we, I told you a while back about my crazy um, rich Asian wedding and I think I, I told you about how it, it's helping. I'm kind of reformulating all these dynamics that I talked to you about that as well. I think you were real early in that, but yes. Yes. Okay. So what happened during that is I, I started like realizing that both my mother and her fear about a lot of different ways of how she needed to survive as an immigrant, as a Chinese woman, and like all those things get you just inherit those ideology, thought patterns, and you believe you because you're a baby, you see through the eyes of the adult that's that's taking care of you, and all those things are true. So I have like this world view of what the world looks like and if it's safe or not for my mom. I also have it for my brother, and. Um, who did all sorts of different things um, to torture me. I mean, in kind of like a kid spirit, right? Like I've told you a lot of things, like blow up my toys, constantly accuse me of stuff when he made mistakes and pin it on it me. It may be a kid spirit, but it does not feel like no, that like at the it's time. Nor does it, those are permanent imprints, or yeah. more permanent. Yeah, so then what happens is that those, fear, those fears become hard bake into your worldview. It's like, you're a little kid, you know, one, you know, newborn, one-year-old, five-year-old, 10-year-old, whatever, and you have this, like, here's the world around me, therefore, I must, you know, protect against, you know, someone pranking me, I have to protect against someone bullying me, I have to protect against someone shooting me with little BB guns, I have to protect, because my mom has Didn't told me the world shoot you with a BB gun? Yeah, <laughs> he took my favorite toy, and then he just put them into little plastic pellets, and then shot me with the pellets, so, you know, all these things that were... <laughs> <laughs> I guess craziness. at least it wasn't the little brass. Uh, exactly. It didn't blind me or anything. Thing. God. So, so it was one of those things that, you know, when you're Shots a little kid. Your own toy. I know. <laughs> it's funny and it's not funny. So he, he basically did these things, but I thought, well, that's really interesting because when that occurs, all of a sudden your attachment to the world as being a safe, secure, loving, grounded place becomes disrupted. And for me, what the wedding did was made very clear that the outcome of having 
that in my earlier stages had resulted in a sense that the world wasn't really safe. So it wasn't really clearly attached because a lot of the, if you think about it, all those things that my brother did, that my mother did, like, they're related to fear. And so those fear-oriented patterns kind of dominated my sense of what the world was all about because that's all you know. It's your household and everything. So, so I'm now shedding some of those. I mean, once you have light come through. So for me, I, I think I told you, I saw my brother and I saw my father who I love. And so this, this, my brother, who I feel somewhat indifferent to all of a sudden, it was like the juxtaposition of you his saw your face. father in your brother. Yeah. Father, my brother. And then all of a sudden I l felt love for my brother. And that little crack of light since I talked to you has just been like opening up and infiltrating my heart. And it's beautiful because it's changed. Like it's changed my view of them okay yeah that may have been the past all those things actually may have been smart relevant things to do as a five-year-old but I'm 55 you know I'm not five I'm 55 and no and I'm safe and none of those things are operative anymore there but I'm still carrying that programming from like 50 years ago like half a century ago this thing happened and I'm still carrying the same dynamics the same fears and it's like, it's time to let it go. And so on my recent retreat, I, let, I, I, I didn't know what was happening. I thought I'd let it go because I've been having all these like wake up in the middle of night shaking. Like it's like the body releasing trauma because even though your mind may have let it go, your body still holds the trauma. I don't know if you experienced the same thing with your mm -hmm, experiences, yeah. but the body was still holding on to the trauma. So I was like waking up in the middle of the night for three hours shaking just letting go of all this fear-based stuff. But, you know, it's possible. So even if, I guess what I'm saying is, even if that does happen, I really doubt, given the beautiful birth that you're planning, that this happens. But you can't control everything. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there could be a teacher. It could be your neighbor. You know, who knows? It could be like some weird stuffed animal that the kid feels scary. <laughs> you don't really know what's going to happen. So, you know, it's... With with consciousness and light and love, of which you will, I know you will be a great parent in sending that, a lot of those things can let go. I mean, even 50 years later, I'm letting go. And it's not, what's interesting to me is that light, mm -hmm. when it comes through, it, 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 it goes through you and it hurt like hell. It literally, what's weird is wow. that it literally physically hurt when it was releasing and you almost have to go through the pain. You have to re-experience the pain in order for that light to break through all this like contracted material and thoughts and beliefs and this whole little world in which you constructed when you weren't safe. And so that's what I've been doing over the last, it seems like last month. So it's possible to get rid of those things too. It's interesting that Jessica is doing a lot of this work right now so that she can clear out what she can for baby. Yeah. You're doing a lot of this work right now so you can clear out for CJ. Yeah. So you're it's like a rebirth of CJ. Yeah, essentially. Or just, yeah, I think that that's a really beautiful way of saying it or, or just like a, a new life forming and yeah. it's not full of fear and like I can just let all of that go and I think it's great that what they say in the model that I'm going through the and I'm sure this is true of any kind of model that when you clear all that that debris all those you know you have to accomplish something you know you have to you have all these fears that are surrounding you when you clear that you're clearing the and I think I've told you this before but you're clearing the karmic path of for 10 generations and seven lifetimes back wow. which I think okay that's worth it you know <laughs> that's completely worth it so you're any work that the two of you are doing is going to affect Jessica uh you your life your baby Hannah's life her kid's life it just that's the thing that's so amazing about this work and all your past lives because there is no time. Yeah. I like to believe no. that's true. When I've done emotion code work mm -hmm. with people, uh, you can go back and you can do clearings from past uh, 
familial lives, for instance, you know, an ancestor or something, and it is supposed to branch out. And I have seen it make differences in people's lives by healing something from the past before your life actually has an effect on you. It has an effect on a sister or brother. It has an effect on their children. So that that energetic imprint, and, and if people are going, well, are energetic imprints real? Well, unless you can point out the spot in the mouse that was born 14 generations after its great, 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 great grand mouse who got zapped in the maze, and now the little guy 14 generations later wouldn't dare step foot in that thing. Mm-hmm. Energetic imprints are real. Yeah. And so you Absolutely. clear that and it makes a massive difference. Yeah. In, in real time, like you said, I've had clients who have done beautiful pieces of healing work that they've undertaken, like re- written letters to people that have harmed them and forgiven them and literally had their whole family system come back online and nothing happened aside from a person going into a vacation cabin, writing down all the hard things that had happened to them, forgiving people, burning up all these thoughts in a big cauldron. He literally burned them up, created paper mache items out of the burnt Mm -hmm. refuse to create something new. And his whole family life changed. And the only thing he did was sit in a cottage writing down these notes and just things just changed out of seemingly nowhere but it's the energetic imprint all energy all all energy yeah so yeah so where did we go with this we have gone anywhere but evening routines morning routines okay (laughs) tell me about your evening routines morning routines and and you can talk about halloween i'm peeking out the window yeah because until a minute ago there were some deer sleeping right outside the window we've had a, I, I think they may have wandered off. We've had a herd of deer that have moved oh, into our yard. Right. Yeah. So, um, and we'll see if they come back. I, I will go and and turn the camera to them. Oh, so we sweet. had, you know, the hummingbird sanctuary this summer. So now we've had a deer sanctuary, and now all these camouflaged little snowbirds. You think of snowbirds as birds that go to like southern places, but it turns out birds from the snowbound north have come down here now, and it's really oh. cool. So. So we're getting instead of hummingbirds, we've got the net, the latest entourage or the latest uh, oh, very bird cool. population of birds. Evening routine. I'm so excited to be releasing this. It has turned out we built this routine or built this program over the summer. It's something I've worked with coaching clients for years. Um, actually, I've worked with coaching clients with this since 2000 or 2001 when I wow. learned that when I was working with students with learning disabilities and in particular ADD. I found that I could make the biggest impact on them if I helped them get a better night's sleep. Mm. That a lot of the focus and, quote, ADD issues went away if they actually were well-rested. They could focus and concentrate. And so we built a program this summer that at first was about setting intention in the evenings, which it does, and helping you to manifest, which it does, which help to help you structure your day, which it does, so that you don't wake up stressed about the day ahead, but you know what's coming, you know what to do, all these beautiful pieces. But then half of the program ended up becoming about how to help people get a better night's sleep. Mm. And and it turns out coaching client after coaching client after coaching client, well, I'll work with them and stuff. But if I was to ask them, how's your sleep? Almost nobody says I'm a great sleeper these days. Mm. Almost everybody is struggling with it. So we built this program and we're just really excited. Once this thing gets launched in the next week or two, I laugh because it's in that that surrender. Right. Um, you know, I say automatic writing is the number one tool to help people. I'm biased. That's my opinion. And so so but there's morning pages. There's other awesome tools out there. But really for changing lives, the tool doesn't matter if you're not getting a good night's rest. If you're waking up stressed and anxious, the tool doesn't mag- matter. If you're feeling like you go to bed at night, everything's not done and your hands are completely tied and you're beside yourself, you wake up the next day flip-flopped upside down and backwards. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're really excited about this. Yeah, I just spoke to someone who's a dear friend who um, ended up finding that getting a bipolar diagnosis and... Um, what she said was that, um, and she said she's doing like 500% better. She feels completely happy. And the first time that she's ever felt grounded and happy in her life. 
And what you said was key was self-care. It's, you know, sleeping, eating well, exercise. I mean, those are kind of the line of first defense and, and meditation. Those things actually made the hugest difference in her well-being. So self-care, sleep, it's critical. I mean, I'm not getting sleep right now and it's awful because I'm getting hot flashes. So on the other end of Jessica's journey uh, are hot flashes and, you know, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, I'm burning up. Like I have a, wow. like a raging fever. I have to tur- whip off the covers. I'm so hot. And then like, you know, 20 minutes later, I'm freezing. And then like two hours later, I'm hot. It's just like, How, how's your husband doing right now? He's okay. Actually, it's the weird thing is I, I don't think it's affecting me emotionally. I think it could and it it probably is at some level but mostly it's affecting me physically I'm just so like hot like I'll just be sitting there and I'm just hot like physically I'm like touch my head honey and he's like oh my god you're sweating and you're like 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 I was sitting in front of a fireplace like it's that hot I know it's the weirdest thing it's the loss of estrogen so anyhow (laughs) I wish I could do those morning, I mean, those evening we, routines. We but... need to get you some sleep. Well, well, maybe the evening routine will get you access. Maybe there's something in there to even help you to sleep. <laughs> yes, maybe I should look at it and see. I think the thing I need is estrogen. So that is the thing that I'm looking at doing right now is just getting hormone replacement, bioidentical hormone replacement, because I, I need to sleep. Because the downside of the things that, that are relevant for bioidentical hormones, there are downsides. But the other downside is like sleep, you know, so you're balancing this like sleep. If I don't sleep for the next five to 10 years when I'm going through this, that's also going to have a really unhealthy effect on me. So you're kind of balancing these two things. It's hard. It's hard to know what the right thing to do is, but at least that's what I'm going to do because I can't. It's torture. It's not to sleep. Intuition. You, you've got to just listen to that voice inside of you and and do no matter anybody says anything you've got to go with what your intuition is telling you yep yep okay so um halloween cruising what happened for you there oh that was just so cool we wanted to go up to to aspen where where there's supposed to be all these people in costumes and jessica was too tired for us to even attempt to get there okay i was probably too tired too (laughs) to try to get there and and we ended up in a children's bookstore which uh because she's so excited about reading hana books with hana inside of her We ended up over the clothing store because it was just fun for her to play with. Well, what am I going to be wearing a month or two from now? Oh, cute. And and then we ended up cruising um, these these little neighborhoods in town because we were driving home. We hadn't seen a kid in costume. And and we're driving home, and there was all of a sudden a horde crossing the road of kids, parents. Are they little ones, like the ones that are like to your belly button? (laughs) Well, they're... All, all shapes and sizes and tiers, the full works, even, you know, dad carrying, you know, a, a rabbit suited little one-year-old or something. <laughs> I love and that. so we kind of followed them. Now, you've got to understand, you know. People are like creepers. <laughs> well, I was wearing a gorilla hat. She was wearing a, a, a sheep hat. So we looked, we looked apart. We've got costume tops on. <laughs> Which, yes, we had worn in Whole Foods, too, because exactly. who doesn't shop in Whole Foods exactly, with their costume Exactly, exactly. Well, you missed the kid part. That's the only thing that probably... <laughs> I was like, we should go trick-or-treating. She's like, we don't have a kid yet. I'm like, you're pregnant. She goes, it'll be weird. <laughs> She's like, but don't worry. Next year, moving forward, you can trick-or-treat again. We just won't give them the candy. I'm like, that's cruel. What are we going to do? <laughs> you got to give them the candy. Seriously, because what happens is, okay, I'll just give you one alternative view on that. Because I, we were kind of like the middle path, right? Give them the candy, but then like cut off half of it. Or, you know, you give them something. Because we had a kid, we had a couple of twins uh, in in my son's class. And they were like, don't give them candy. You know, you get carrots and give the candy away. And those kids, once they were in high school and they had a cafeteria where they had free access to as much soda that they'd want and whatever bad thing that they cookies and whatever they just went berserk these kids went berserk (laughs) because it's all like there's a middle path i think in that because halloween is fun candy is nice it's just moderation right so we, we will be trick-or-treating and i'm sure there'll be a, a, a you know a good buddha middle path there that we will 
but but starting next year so this year we just cruised through the neighborhoods i mean these neighborhoods were crazy it was like christmas decorations giant yeah. spiders outside one place had a uh, had a um outdoor theater playing an animated movie on the garage what the so heck the, that's awesome others have laser shows i'm like wow wow I'm like, I've never seen anything. there was one one that had all these uh, tombstones and and uh, you know the cobwebs and stuff, and then there was a swing above the tombstone with a little kid on it, but it wasn't actually a kid. It was like a motorized or robotic kid. I'm like how in the world did they do that? I'm like Jessica, tell me that's a real person. Nope. <laughs> we had so much fun though. It is so, fun. It's coming. It's all coming. It will be, and then you'll get to carve pumpkins and have Easter eggs that you paint. I mean, it's so much fun. So I miss those things. One thing at a time, though, we'll yes. take it. One thing I got out, out of automatic writing as well. Actually, no, I was writing a letter to Hana and I got out of it. I said, I can't wait to meet you or to see you. And then I stopped and I said, wait a second. No, I appreciate this perfect moment just as it is, I don't need to rush this at all. I will just anchor in each moment, let it unfold, not try to push it, not try to say, well, when we get Hana, mm. or when we're at this point, or when we're that, let's just appreciate right now. It's funny because I had a comparable thought, but different, I, I guess a different scenario in that um, when Jida, my eldest, was leaving for college, I keep on count, I do a countdown. Eight more months till he goes. Seven more months. Six more months, you know. And I'd like work myself into a frenzy. And I thought, wait, how many more months until Caden goes to college? And it's about eight more months. But it was so interesting because I've done so much work. I've seen Jida go through, my eldest son go through, leaving through college. And it's not like the end of the world. And I, I have a different relationship with Caden. And I'm going to miss him so much because I have, he's just like my... He like is personifies he's love. Yeah, he's my baby and he personifies love. Like he is just love. And so it's like love walking out the door. And but the weird thing is is I I have a very different kind. I've done so much work on letting go that I feel really sad that he's leaving, but it's, you know, 8 months and I think I have been I don't know if I've been more present, but I haven't been as despondent, which felt nice. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think it's it's on the flip side of launching, except this is launching out, really out, out of the home <laughs> versus launching launching out of your your belly into your home. So, but I think it's it's uh, appreciating and rejoicing in every moment and being present. So any other thoughts before we close? We may have to double back on, on routines and giving people some good advice for next time. I'm, I'm going, how in the world will we title this thing? What has been the main theme? What has been that one thing? Would you, do you know, what would you say is the one thing, one thread that goes through today's show? I think it's probably um, accepting. It's probably a combination of accepting and letting go. Because, you know, it's, uh, that's what I'm hearing as a thread, right? For me, like letting go of the fear-based ideas that keep you in a place of not being present to what is. And I'm hearing the same thing with Jessica, right? It's like, okay, you're not accomplishing those things that your parents wanted you, but you're building a baby, like you're saying. And so how can you, uh, how can you just accept and accept? and love what is and let go of of a change in life like things are changing in life and you can't do those things anymore and it's okay that's what I would say is the thing you know even including myself I'm letting go of a whole bunch of fear-based patterns that I actually mm -hmm. collected probably near you know the first five years of my life and we always have an opportunity to let go of those things I'm going to make a run for the window. Okay. I can't believe I'm going to drive my editor probably. I love you, Misha. Drive him nuts. Let's see if I can stay on audio. Let's see if I can bring this over to the window and see if you can see. Can you see the deer munching about literally oh, five sweet. 
I see two deer. Oh. There's a third one right down there. If you can see Oh, I that. do. I see three little. Oh, four. I see four. There's a whole herd out there now. Oh, my right God. Right outside <gasps> our window. Oh, my gosh. That is it. So oh if I raise up, see if you can get a better view here for those who are not on audio. Only. I don't know maybe. Wow. Maybe there you can get a good view of the Yeah. We just feel like we're surrounded and gifted you by are. such nature. And and I think it's here for all of us. We just we were fortunate enough to plant ourselves here. Yeah. But if there's one thing we know during this pregnancy is to stay as connected as we can to the natural world. Mm. And I think it puts everything in perspective. And I think, you know, these are what, 100, 200 pound deer? Maybe they're bigger than that, right outside our window. And, and it just has such a calming and perspective shift when you're out surrounded by nature like this. Yeah. Makes you realize that there's so much more that we're not seeing because we're stuck in our own perspective, right? Yeah. And all you have to do is shift perspective. Exactly. So right now it's like nice and warm out. Jessica's out for a hike. No. And then this evening, nature is going to shift perspective on us with a beautiful snowstorm. What? Wow. So six to 12 inches, I think, this weekend. Wow. And, and so we're going to go from hiking to snowshoeing, but even or especially through her pregnancy. We're going to stay outside. We're going to surrender to what is. We'll bundle her up like the Michelin man, although she's generating a lot of heat now, too. Yeah. She can't believe it. Yeah. Both things, hormones, will do it to you. Yeah. All right. So any last words of wisdom you want to share with people, CJ? I'm good. I'm good. How about I'm you? Kind of, I'm kind of blissed out by the deer. <laughs> uh, I totally agree that that is really – the theme right now is letting go. And, and I think if I bring it home back to the evening routine and sleep, sleep to me is the ultimate expression of surrender. Mm -hmm. You cannot force yourself to sleep. You cannot go to bed and going, I'm going to sleep now. You have to let go. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let go, you will never sleep. The more you try to sleep, the more the sleep escapes you. Mm -hmm. For everything that Jessica and I are going through, for everything that you are going through, for everything all of our listeners are going through, the more you try to grab on and hold to it, it's sort of like trying to hold on to a frog or something. <laughs> right. It jumps out. We have to be willing to just totally let go. And if you go, well, if I totally let go, nothing is going to get done. I don't buy that in the least. I think the more we let go, the more energy we have in reserve to get the important stuff done. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Both very, very late. I am so, so sorry, CJ. <laughs> Saying be well. <laughs> have fun. Accept and revel in the fact that we cannot control our lives. We're just along for a beautiful, beautiful ride. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woo! Okay. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.